Hi, my name is Oliver O'Brien. I'm a 20 year old student, entrepreneur, son, brother, and friend to many. Now, I found myself in front of you today in the great theme of the truth of the matter. Now, in the great essence of TEDx, where you've got an idea worth spreading, I've got an idea that I think you may not have thought about. I've got an idea which might address the elephant in the room. I've got an idea which conceptualizes the mind and may affect you in a way that you might not have thought about. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist, not a psychiatrist. In fact, I'm not even a graduate. However, I do believe I'm a keen-minded individual who may have found a pattern in humanity that is worth sharing. So, let me give you a bit of backstory. About a year ago, I came to Loughborough University and started my university course. Now, I was that keen-minded individual who came to university and saw every, every single opportunity and jumped straight at it. Now, I was part of nine sports teams, five societies, committee interviews, started my own company, and was jumping at every other opportunity that was around. Now, as you can well imagine, after about three to four weeks, I was boiled over. No time spare, absolutely no time for anything else. So on exactly one of those days, I left my house at seven in the morning, went out, went to my lectures, did conference calls, went to meetings, and did absolutely everything. I was back at 11.30 at night, not having eaten, not having had a single moment of time for myself. And I came back and my flatmate was sitting awake. And I asked him what he'd been doing all day. To which he replied to me that he'd been cleaning up his hard drive, catching up on Bing Bang Theory, and figuring out what his next episode was going to be. Only to realize the next day he had an assignment due. So being naturally quite puzzled at that, I found myself retreating back into my room and going, okay, not sure what the difference between us here is. Now there must be something else there. Now that's exactly what I like to call busy procrastination. So that brings me to why and what I'm going to speak about today. Now, I figured that there must be an overlap between personality traits and the tasks we take on and how someone can be a busy person as well as a productive person and both at the same time as well as individually. Now, what I found was that as much as you can't be busy and productive perfectly at 100%, you also can't be both 100% and 50% respectively equally. However, there will always be one dominant. So you'll always be predominantly productive or predominantly busy, whilst handling all those personality traits and tasks that you take on on a daily basis. Now, just to get a feel for the room, can you put your hand up if you ever feel like you've had too much to handle? Ever felt like you had that plate that was just stacked too full and things were falling off the side? Right, so quite a few of you. Now I find myself in that same situation a year ago, and I figured there has to be something that I can do about it, because so many other people are doing so much more than I am but are doing it far more productively, and I'm just finding myself being busy. That brings me to my talk today, which is the quintessential difference between being busy and productive. Now, this may be a lot of fluff to you, but as I said, you might actually walk away, and even if you take one slide from what I've said today, it might affect the way you complete a task, it might, might affect the way, you, we, the way you take on an opportunity, or even just the approach that you have towards a certain aspect of life. Now, obviously, this only applies to a certain age group. Now, you'll find that between birth and the ages of 14, 15, there aren't that many opportunities out there that you're conscious about. Also, the tasks that you take on may not be that quintessential in your entire life and may only have a short run effect. Similarly, when you turn 60, 65, which I'm hopefully a far way away from, you'll find that your life starts to slow down. Your priorities become less important. You start doing more things for yourself. Now, quite ironically, the two mindsets are very alike, but I'm going to keep that for another talk, I hope. So what we're getting at today is relating to real life, to be able to let you guys realize which one you're actually more alike. Now, what's important is that it doesn't matter which one you're actually part of, because the perfect thing you can do is to think to yourself, okay, I'm one of the two, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave today and I'm either going to accept what I am and the implications and the ramifications of that, 
Or you're going to make a conscious choice to, ch to change to the other side and take that effort and try and change something for the future. So to relate this to real life, I'll give you a couple of examples. So a busy person will usually have a mission illusion, whereas a productive person will usually have a life mission. You'll also find that a busy person will give you quite fit, quick answers, very quick and responsive, and the productive person will give you a thought out answer. A busy person will have multiple goals, whereas a productive person will set their priorities. You'll find that a productive person will have a hierarchy, like a pyramid, where they will stick at the top the things that are very important to them, the things that are close to their heart, and things that they would find great value in. You'll find that the busy person has just a cluster of different tasks and opportunities that they mix and match according to what they need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. You'll find that a busy person will usually have a bit more problem balancing with life, because they're much more distracted by external factors. A productive person will balance their time with the important tasks that they have at hand. Now you'll find that a productive person will work for the client. A busy person will usually work for their boss. A productive person will tactically accept tasks, whereas a busy person will have, usually have trouble saying no. Now a productive person has few priorities. They're core values that, that stick close to them and may have been dependent on what they've experienced in the past. A busy person will usually have few, uh, several priorities that are usually taken on by every single task. If that is a set of guidelines or, or, guidelines or a mark scheme, it doesn't matter. Now, a busy person is someone who acts fast and instinctively. A productive person will have to think something through before they act. And you'll find that a busy person will have their doors very open. If that's in an office environment or if that's at home, if that's just as a personality or the way you see someone. A productive person will have their doors closed, a very hard to approach person. They'll also be a focused worker, a heads down, get to work person whilst a busy person will be a multitasker, taking on tasks while they're doing other ones. So this leads me that all these examples lead to three core factors that create this cocktail and funnel of my busy versus productive theory. Now you'll find that one of the key factors is the yes to all people. Now that's maybe from the Truman Show, you may know that, that the people go along and they just say, yes to absolutely everything. That's their instinct if they, if they actually have an importance to what, they, what they're saying yes to or not. That's their instinct because they either can't say no or they don't want to. You'll also have the perfectionists. The people who go around a corner exactly how it's meant to be. They will not try and cut it, they will not try and, try and round an edge. They will stick to the mark scheme and they will just go at, go at it exactly like it's said. And you'll also have the people who repeat versus automate their tasks. Now, Clients and businesses have often said that their core problem with their employees is that they find themselves jumping into that busyness trap. And a core value in employees with several companies is that they like their employees to be busy. So what they've said is they've, that they have examples of how their employees are split between be, being busy and productive. Let's look at some examples. So a busy person will answer emails quite fast, whereas a productive piece, people, person will take their time and slow down their emails. Now they'll focus on the time that they do have, whilst the busy person will talk a lot about how little time they actually have. Now a hard worker is usually someone who's a busy person. A productive person is usually someone who's a tactical worker. You'll also find that a busy person has much of a micro mentality. Focuses on the first, the first people who get affected by something. The macro mentality are people who have secondary and tertiary effects and they worry about those. Productive people usually will utilize the people in their team take the assets of every single person in their team, delegate, and then find how to most effectively complete a project. A busy person will also usually work best alone. So that led me to think, what makes, makes people actually take on tasks? What was found that women were reported to be far busier than men were? Now usually between the ages of 30 and 60 is reported to be the busiest time of your life. Now there was a survey done of an average day and how people reported that busyness actually took part. Now, in the great words of John Lennon, life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. So let's have a look at that. Busyness was reported that 51% of, so of someone's day was taken up by their hobbies. 52 was recreation, 56 was sleep, 44% was family, and quite ironically, 30% was only family. Now, touching on that last subject, sac sector, family. In 1987, one of the core values among the public was to have a family meal. That was very important. Now 50% said 
that they have at least one family meal every day. And we'll find that the factors and resources have changed over time, which is why the busy versus productive theory may not have actually been applicable at the time and has only come in the change of the century. Because in 2016, only 30% said they had a family meal a day. So you'll see how over, the, over, over a long period of time, the resources have changed, the priorities have changed, and naturally a busy versus productive theory has become more applicable than ever before. So you may be thinking, which one are you? Now, can you put your hand up if you believe you're a productive person? Not that very many of you. Now, which one of you thinks you're a busy person? A lot more of you. Now, you may be standing there and going, well, hang on, the productive person sounds like a much better person. Because I don't blame you, last year I found myself in the same shoes. Now, the good news is that there's a mechanism for you to change. Now, if you want to remain a busy person predominantly and only have an aspect which becomes productive, then that's fine. This mechanism is going to help you. So first of all, it's to have a primary focus, to have that trajectory in life, to have something to work towards. You'll also have to remove, remove the word should. To should have, to should be, to should think. You'll find yourself saying should more than you should actually use your action words of being, acting, and doing. Now one of the main wheels for this whole mechanism to start working you to become more productive is to cut out your distractions. If that's writing things down on a piece of paper that actually have no space in your mind, if that's actually the th just going and playing a sport, even if that's only looking at a clock for a minute to realize what you're actually doing in your life, you cut out your distractions and you'll find yourself naturally to be a far more productive person and set your priorities straight. Now, in the great words of Grace Marshall, true productivity is satisfaction in a world where work never ends. Excitement without exhaustion, opportunity without overwhelm. It's the ability to, to give our best in any situation and to keep doing our best. Now, I wouldn't be a good presenter if I didn't look at both sides of the, sides of the equation. So there's downsides to being productive as well. So where you busy people will find yourselves laughing. You'll find that a busy person usually is someone who completes tasks in a slower time. They'll spend far more time planning than doing. However, what you get in the end can always be different. You'll also find that a productive person will often think in the long run leading to disarray when you need them on the spot. Similarly, you'll find that a productive person is far less, far less flexible. Imagine a Swiss shopkeeper who's been told by the local government to close his shop at six o'clock on the dot. I don't know if you've been to Switzerland before, but one thing's for sure, that shop is not opening one minute after six. You'll also find that a productive person cannot work to get, you can't work together with them on an immediate basis, mostly because they're so structured. They have a way of doing things that leads them to not be able to easily be flexible with whatever, they're, whatever project they're working on. Now, here are another four things which will help you out between being busy and productive. Now, the main part there is delegate. That'll apply to you in your work life. If you get a project, you'll find you need to delegate tasks. If that's taking the entire task and saying you have no importance to it and giving it to someone who seeks benefit out of it greater than you, then so be it. But you'll find that naturally that'll, that'll help you. Also clear your mind. As I said before, take a piece of paper. Write down all the things that are swirling around in your head that actually you realize have no importance in the day or, at the ta or, or with the task at hand. You'll find yourself to be more productive there. Schedule relaxation time. If you believe in meditation, if you believe in sport, in anything like that, find something that you can just go and distract yourself with and refresh your mind before returning to a task. And lastly, you've already banned that word should. Now additionally to that, I want you to ban the word busy. Not only does busy have a neg negative connotation, busy is a natural block to the mind and to others trying to approach you. And you'll find that just by simply removing the word busy, productivity will naturally come to you. Now, as Socrates said, and as applicable as this may be, beware, beware of the barrenness of a busy life. Now, you'll find yourself at the end of the day with a mindset. You'll find yourself with a decision, and you'll find yourself thinking about your future. And that's exactly where this theory falls into place. If that's before a task, during a task, or at the end of a task, just reflect on what you're actually doing, why you took on the task, what you're doing with the task, and what future benefit it has for you. And like that, you'll find that you'll fall into one of the traps and you'll go on with the task as it may be. Now, thought for the future. I asked you before if you ever felt you'd stack, stack that plate too high when things started falling off the side. Now, that 
image exactly I want you to be thinking about. The next time you walk out of this door and someone asks you to take on a task or gives you an opportunity, as great as it may seem, I want you to stop and give yourself 10 seconds and just think about a couple of key questions. Who are you actually doing that task for? Why are you doing that task? Are you, do you have enough time to do that task? And where's the future benefit in it? You'll find that simply taking those 10 seconds will allow you to seek and understand the benefit of it and actually choose tasks in a more reflective and productive way. Now let's reflect on what I've told you today. I've told you my backstory of how this all started at university a year ago, the build up to my theory, the impact it may have on you on a personal and a work related life. The theory itself along with some examples for you to determine which one you were more part of as well as the psychological aspect and a changeover process should you actually be interested in that. Now this talk may not have actually done anything for you but you'll find that the quintessential part of this presentation is its simplicity and the simplicity of it is the perfection to it. Now even if it's done nothing for, nothing for you just remember that learning never exhausts the mind. However, what I am hoping is that you're sitting there and a part of you wants to get out and do something about it. And you're sitting on the edge of your seat, no matter for what reason. And in that case, I want to leave you with the great words of one of my favorite people, Mr. Walt Disney, that the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Thank you.